What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing well. Today I'm going to be doing my review of the new Pat McGrath Bridgerton Volume 2 collection. If you guys want to hear all of my thoughts about this collection, maybe some demos, some swatches, and a comparison with Volume 1, then keep watching. And if you are new here, welcome. My name is Sophia. This is my channel, Sophia Sees Beauty, where we talk about all things beauty and makeup. I upload content every single week on all the newest luxury beauty releases, so if you want a little bit more beauty, maybe a little bit more luxury in your feed, then definitely hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell to hear about every time I post a new video. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up friends and as always I will be linking everything that is on my face and everything that I mentioned in this video in the description box down below. Okay friends let's talk about this new collection from Pat McGrath and Netflix. In other words I'm not gonna lie, I was slightly annoyed by this release just because we just saw the Bridgerton Volume 1 collection come out. If you guys are interested in my review of that collection, I already did a video on that, so I will link that down below in case you wanna kind of check out more in-depth swatches, demo, everything about that collection. Spoiler alert, I enjoyed the collection. I really liked the products that were in that. I thought they were very good value. I liked the eyeshadow palette. And then we got this collection and I was a little bit surprised that we were getting another Bridgerton collection so soon after the first one. I almost felt like I didn't have enough time to fully enjoy volume one and then we're just coming straight out of the gate with volume two. But at the same time, guys, you know, to be fair, I do understand that they are releasing Bridgerton season two. And so they're kind of doing this as a follow-up collection in order to kind of commemorate that season. I'm almost wondering if maybe they were having some like supply chain issues or something like that. Maybe the Bridgerton one collection was supposed to come out a lot sooner. And instead they kind of pushed it back to holiday time. We'll never know. But needless to say, <laughs> I was a little bit annoyed because I felt like I just didn't have enough time to really like fully appreciate the first collection. There are a bunch of different products that are in this collection. First up, we have the Belle of the Ball eyeshadow palette. I did pick this up and I am gonna be doing in this video just a comparison with the palette from volume one, just to kind of help you guys figure out if you need it, do you want it? Which one should you get if you didn't pick up the first one? So we will get into that. The other items that I picked up are the Satin Allure lipsticks. I picked up two of these in the colors Negligee and Venusian Peach. I was really excited for these. I think this might be the product that I was the most excited about just because Pat McGrath actually doesn't have a satin lipstick formula. She originally launched with one if I recall, alongside her matte trans formula, which I love, but she didn't keep it around. I don't think it sold very well. I'm not sure if it was sort of just makeup trends at the time or if the formula just wasn't that luxurious. So I'm really excited for these. And these come in kind of like a special little packaging with a bow. We're gonna talk a little bit about packaging later on in the review when we do the swatches, but I will mention that. Some other products in this collection that I didn't pick up are first up, there's a new baked blush palette. I've heard really, really good things about this formula. But in general, guys, it's just this product isn't really made for me. I don't watch Bridgerton. I have watched a couple of episodes. I understand why people like it, but I just don't watch a lot of TV. So don't, don't come for me. If there's anything that I should know about Bridgerton that helps me understand this collection, definitely comment down below and let me know. But in general, I think that this blush palette is a little bit more of a collector's item. I haven't heard super great things about the packaging. It's very bulky. It's kind of made of like lightweight cardboard, etc. But I really hope that Pat McGrath launches these blushes and maybe singles or in other collections in the future. So yeah, I didn't pick that one up. In addition, there's also like a shimmery body powder. It comes with one of those like fancy powder puffs, etc. I also didn't pick that up because I just don't really see myself using that. Although I definitely see the appeal. I definitely think it fits in with the theme of the collection. And then lastly, there's also a new eyeliner formula. I also didn't pick that up just because I've been buying so so many eyeliners lately but it definitely looks good i'm sure it's very good quality i haven't seen anybody demo that yet so definitely comment down below if you pick that up and let me know how it performed let's talk a little bit about the products that i picked up starting with the bell of the ball eyeshadow palette now here's another thing that kind of annoyed me guys this palette does look eerily similar to the first one i'm going to show you guys a shot right here of both of these palettes side by side when we get into the swatches i am going to be talking a little bit more about how these compare from kind of a shade comparison and the color story etc the packaging is very very similar this one's blue this one's pink they're both made in italy they both have an 18 month shelf life and in terms of the formula you're getting the same quality like spoiler alert this palette same good quality as the volume 
volume one and I mentioned this in my review of volume one but I really like that she included a bunch of different formulas in here that you don't normally see in her six pan palette you're getting some really high shine metallics you're getting some very blendable mattes you also have these baked shades here you can use this pink one as a blush that's a little bit different you're also getting some astral shades in this palette so you're really getting a little bit of everything I don't think we've seen this before from other Pat McGrath palettes so I do just want to point that out right off the bat these are a little bit unique compared to other six pan palettes in the pat mcgrath line and as i just mentioned a second ago both of these palettes are made in italy typically we see a lot of really nice high quality luxurious formulas coming out of italy and that is different from some of her other six pan palettes which i believe are made in the united states or other countries so these are basically made i think in probably the same lab where they are making the motherships and some of those other more expensive pat mcgrath palettes i also forgot to mention and these are both $65 so they're both the same price and they're very much in line with the other Pat McGrath six pan palettes and I bought all of these products on the Pat McGrath website when they went live with my own money Next, we have the Satin Allure Lipsticks. And as I mentioned a second ago, this is a new formula for Pat McGrath. She really didn't have a satin lipstick formula previously. She does have the Divinals. Like she has more of like creamy moisturizing balms, but she didn't have a true satin lipstick. These come in seven shades and depending on what shade you buy, you're either going to get this pretty little pinky peach packaging or you're gonna get a baby blue packaging. And all of the shades look very lovely. I just wanted some nudes. So I'm gonna be reviewing Negligee and the Nuge and peach which seem to be the two most popular colors in the reviews that I have watched already all the shades look very wearable I'm trying to compare these shades against what is in her permanent line or in her matte trance and it seems like most of these are new colors so comment down below if I messed up on that but I'm pretty sure that these are new shades which I'm also really happy about I'm looking on the Pat McGrath website right now and these are described as a satin shine finish with medium buildable coverage and they have comfortable weightless creamy texture one important note about these is that these retail for $28, which is actually a lot cheaper than her regular lipsticks. And we're going to get into why I think that is a little bit later in the video, but her regular lipsticks are $38. These are $28. And I, I would say $10 is a considerable saving with these kinds of luxury products. So I do want to mention that with this, the price is definitely different. These are a bit of an exclusive release. My guess is that she's going to come out with this formula in a different type of packaging and more of a like long-term permanent packaging. Will it still be $28? We won't know, but we will definitely be paying attention to see. All right, guys, so that's a little bit about these products and about that collection. Now what I'm gonna do is get into swatches and a demo of all of these products. I'm also gonna be comparing the two eyeshadow palettes so you guys can get more of a sense of the difference between the color schemes. Then I will summarize everything in my final thoughts. All right, party people, I've got you up close. This is Pat McGrath. So. We are doing live swatches today, starting off with the Belle of the Ball eyeshadow palette. Can you guys see my little Easter Hello Kitty in the background there? <laughs> so once again, here is the palette and I'm just gonna kind of swatch it row by row. Starting off with Refinement, which is a luminous pale rose gold highlighter. We have Regency Romance, which is a peony pink satin matte eye blush. This can also be used on the cheeks, obviously. Diamonds Desire. This is that sparkly shade. There actually is not a description on the Pat McGrath website, but if you look very closely at this, hopefully it's coming across, this is like a disco ball. It's basically a mix of peach, gold, and silver glitter all in one shade with a bit of a like pinky champagne base. Next up, we have Forbidden Amour, a velvety plum matte. Let's get a little bit more on there so we can get a better swatch. There we go. Daring Dandy, a pastel aqua metallic. Unlike the one that is in the second palette, this is more of a metallic shade. It does say on the website that this is an astral shade, but I really don't think it is. I think that maybe there's a little bit of a typo. I would say Diamond's Desire is more similar to the astral shades that she has in her Mothership palettes, whereas this has the same texture as her High Shine Metallic. So I don't know if that's a misprint, but I just want to let you guys know Diamond's Desire is more of an astral formula and Daring Dandy feels more like a smooth buttery metallic. And lastly, the shade we've all been waiting for, Forever Charmed. Ooh. This is described as a deepened chartreuse. You can kind of tell it as a little bit of a black base and this one is also described as an astral shade. So those were all of the shades, guys. I'm going to show you just like a quick close-up of all of the swatches in their totality. And I think you can tell right here from the swatch 
swatches, Forever Charmed is more of one of those smoother astral shades, whereas Diamonds Desire is definitely more of a glitter. So now I am just wiping off half of those swatches because what we're going to do is we're going to compare this against the Pat McGrath Bridgerton Volume 1. So let's do that. So here we are comparing Refinement with Iconic Ingenue, which is from the first palette. I would say that Refinement is just a little bit brighter and a little bit more shimmery, whereas Iconic Ingenue, this one is just a little bit more muted. Next up, we're comparing Regency Romance with Art of the Swoon. These are very, very similar. Regency Romance just has a little bit more of like a peony tone as she described on her site, whereas Art of the Swoon is definitely more of a bright, like fuchsia pink. So next up we have Diamond's Desire versus Duchess Divinity. This is that smooth mauve tone that's in the palette. Obviously, these are very different shades. Diamond's Desire is more of a sparkly astral shade, but if I'm gonna kind of do a match for match, these are the two that I'm gonna be comparing. Next, we have Forbidden Amour versus Plum Regalia. Once again, these are pretty similar. You can see that Forbidden Amour is just a little bit more red tone, whereas Plum Regalia, it's more of a plum eggplant purple. Next up, we have Daring Dandy versus Regency Blue. And obviously, guys, these are two different formulas. Daring Dandy is a lot more of like an aqua. It has a little bit more of a pastel tone to it. Whereas Regency Blue, it's one of those astral shades. And clearly there's a there's a huge difference in the formula. And lastly, we have the biggest difference in the palette, which is Forever Charmed versus Love Match. Okay, so in the first palette, you are definitely getting a more pinky and purple color tone. Whereas you can see right here with the volume two, it's a little bit more of a mix. And I'll show you guys a side-by-side -side close up right now. We've got volume one on the left and we've got volume two on the right. To me, volume one definitely leans more pinky and purple. Whereas volume two, you have a little bit more diversity in the shades, especially because in volume one, you are not only getting a purple shimmer, but you're getting two of these pink baked shades. So all of the looks that I've seen really turn out very pink. Before we do the demo, let me show you guys the lipsticks. So this is the packaging that the lipstick bullet comes in. I'm here for this. I actually really like this packaging. I think it looks super cute. I love the bright pink. I don't know what it is. I, I just like the box, but the actual bullet itself, I'm actually not super impressed with this, guys. I think it looks cute. It's fine. I'm not, I'm not so much here for the bow, but it's cute. I think my biggest complaint here is that this packaging actually feels quite flimsy. If you look inside right here, you can see this is very thin. Like, listen, that kind of just feels like a cheap, like drugstore lipstick. And let me show you guys just a comparison with her regular lipsticks. You can kind of tell, can you tell there that this is thinner? And if you just look at the cap itself, it's just smaller, it's thinner. Like when you listen to this, and then you listen to this, you can tell that this is just thinner and a little bit cheaper. But when I compare the actual lipsticks, and keep in mind, I've actually used this one. This is the color Dream Lover. This is like my favorite Pat McGrath lipstick. I don't think you're actually really getting that much less lipstick. In fact, you might be getting the exact same amount, maybe a tiny bit less. And these are about $10 cheaper, if I'm not mistaken. So I would actually say that these Bridgerton ones, they're a very good value if you're someone that wants to give Pat McGrath lipsticks a try, or if you just don't feel like paying an extra 10 dollars for more luxurious packaging so i'm just kind of putting that out there these are her satin allure formula and i have two colors negligee and venusian peach i just wanted to get like some nudes something easy that i knew i would wear so let's swatch negligee so this is negligee guys it's a really beautiful kind of warm toned nude very very wearable this is kind of like my lips but better it just deepens up my lips a little bit i was wearing this in my sephora haul unboxing the other day and i was like well, what am I wearing on my lips? And then I remembered it was this negligee. So that's a pretty color. Let me show you Venusian peach. So this right here is Venusian peach. And as you can see, it's very similar. It's just a little bit lighter, a little bit peachier, whereas negligee is a little bit deeper and warmer. If you're like me and you have very pigmented lips, you might really like negligee. And I will show you guys a close up right now of both of these colors, just so you can kind of appreciate the differences between the tones. And maybe that'll help you decide which one you might prefer. It's demo time. Let's get into the 
application using the eye palette first. I have been testing this out for a few days, so I definitely have some thoughts and I do have a better idea of how these apply. So this isn't a first impressions. I'm gonna share with you guys a couple of application tips. And I'm also going to attempt to use all of the colors because I don't necessarily think that these should all go on your eye, but we're gonna try it today. I'm gonna start off with Regency Romance All in the Crease. Wow. Definitely put too much on, so we're gonna blend that out. One thing that I like about Regency Romance, just compared to the first palette, is I find that it applies just a little bit softer. I know that it looks very pink right here, but let me show you guys when I go in with a different brush and a lighter hand, just how soft and diffuse you can make that color. So I was kind of going ham because I really wanted to show you guys how you can build this up. Even though this is a baked formula, I find it pretty easy to pick up. And because it is a baked formula, it goes on incredibly smoothly. I'm first gonna go into Forever Charmed and just show you what it looks like with a dry brush. You get quite a bit of pigment. This color actually looks really good just all on its own with a little bit of a brown crease. Like if you just take your bronzer, you pop that in the crease and you put this all over the lid. It's a really nice one and done shade. And then I just wanna test out using this with a wet brush. So I'm gonna wet my brush with this Mayron Mixing Liquid. Pat McGrath includes this in her sort of like eye kits. And so it's perfect for these types of baked astral shades. So yeah, you can really see there see the pigment i don't necessarily think that this shade goes very well with a pink crease <laughs> spoiler alert guys i don't really think that forever charm goes very well with the pink but we're gonna do it today so that's what that looks like we're gonna blend it out but first i like to wait for it to dry before i do that and the mixing liquid not only does it help to really bring out the shine but it also really helps to set that color once it's applied so i'm gonna go into daring dandy and i'm gonna put this on the inner half of the eye Ooh, okay i hope this looks cute because i gotta leave the house later <laughs> We're gonna blend it all together, like when in doubt, blend, blend, blend. I love this shade, Daring Dandy. It is so beautiful. This would be really nice, again, as like a one and done shade, it'd be so nice. I'm also applying Daring Dandy to the inner corner and just the lower lash line right here. Now I am just blending these colors together so we can really soften all those lines. So I blended those out and now I'm gonna take a little bit of Forbidden Amour and just try that out in the outer corner just to kind of tie all these colors in with the pink and deepen up the look. I'm going in with Refinement on this little pencil brush. Ooh, that picks up a lot. And I'm just gonna kind of highlight the brow bone with that because this is described as a highlighter shade and this would be a good everyday shade if you just want something really easy i'm also going to add a little bit in the inner corner because i really love that pop of shine lastly we're going in with the stunna shade which is diamond's desire now i can't stress this enough this is incredibly glittery you're going to get fallout i wore this the past two days and I love this shade. It's so, so beautiful, but I did end up with glitter all over my cheeks. What I did find helped is just adding the Pat McGrath Intensifies Artistry Wand. So we're gonna try that today. And then I'm also gonna try a little bit of the Mayron Mixing Medium just to see kind of what the difference might be because I didn't try that with this the other day. This is very, very glittery. If you don't like glitter and you don't like that sparkle and shine, you might not want to get this palette. I can't emphasize that enough. Okay, so I'm going to go in with the Artistry Wand just on the center of the lid. And this is what that looks like just on my pinky. And I'm going to press it on. <gasps> Can you guys see? Like, look at this eye and then look at this eye. Like, look how sparkly that is and it really kind of blurs all of the colors together but you can see there's still a little bit of fallout right there so let's try the other eye with the mayron all right so i've got some on my brush right there we're gonna just <gasps> okay this is kind of like when you see those instagrams of pat mcgrath's looks it's like she just paints it like onto the model's eye and it's like that finishing touch where you're just like whoa how did she do that 
Okay, so we've got, I would say it's a very similar effect to be honest with you. I don't really think that you need the intensifies one. I've said this to you guys before. It's really nice. It's really nice for every day to just kind of have on my vanity and grab. But if I really want these shimmers to stick, then I'm gonna be using this Mayron Mixing Medium. I totally thought I was filming and I was not. All I did was put a little bit of, what is this called? Regency Romance here on the cheek. So I just used that as a blush and it being a baked formula, it goes on really, really smoothly. Just like the ones from the first palette, it works perfectly as a blush. All right, friends, I just put on a little bit of eyeliner and some lashes, and this is the final eye look. I don't love it, but I don't hate it. Again, we're using all of the shades in one. I definitely don't recommend doing that because I think when you use too many of the shades, you kind of lose the specialness of each individual shade and they do tend to get a little bit muddy. I definitely recommend going in with a wet brush on any of the big shades and also maybe using a mixing medium or her intensifies wand when you go in with that Diamonds Desire shade. I definitely got way less fallout than I did in previous applications. So I think that that is gonna be your best bet. But yeah, I think all of the shades they applied perfectly. The quality is really good. It's just, I think it's a little bit difficult to create a look with all of the shades, given that really the only kind of crease shade that you're working with is a bright peony pink. Let's try on these lipsticks next. So I have the Nugent Peach. We're gonna do this one first, just cause it's the lighter of the two. And you can see, just how moisturizing and satin these are. They're very, very smooth. So this is Venusian Peach. It's just a really beautiful nude peach. Feels very satiny, very creamy, very moisturizing. Nothing groundbreaking, but a very, very nice formula. So this is Venusian Peach. Next up, we have Negligee, which is the sort of deeper nude of the two. And I'll also mention, guys, I'm not wearing anything on my lips. I just had a little bit of lip balm, no lip liner or anything. So this is negligee. As you can see, it's a little bit deeper, a little bit more on like a true nude tone. Mm. I think this one is my favorite. This is definitely kind of one of my go-to types of tones. That's why I got them in the nudes. But I, I like Venusian peach for like a little pop of springtime peach. All right, friends, I hope that those swatches and this application was helpful for you guys. Now we're gonna get into my final thoughts. All right, friends, now it's time for my final thoughts. What do I think of this Bridgerton 2 collection? Let's start off with my thoughts about this eyeshadow palette just on its own. As I alluded to before, this is very, very good quality. I think the quality definitely stands up to the price and just to the Pratt McGrath brand in general. I think that this is a really good value because you're getting so many different types of finishes in one. You've got mattes, you have metallics, you've got this baked shade, which you can use as a blush. You can use this color as a highlighter on your cheeks. And then of course you have these stunning astral shades. So I really, really appreciate that. And I think it's really good, especially for maybe like fans of Bridgerton who have never tried Pat McGrath, but they wanna pick this up as a collector's item, something they can use and enjoy. They're getting a little bit of everything. You're getting a little taste of Pat McGrath and all of her formulas. So I definitely appreciate that. And like I said, I think it makes for a really good value. Now talking a little bit about the color scheme of this, I have to say there's pros and cons of this. The pros are that you get a little bit more differentiation. What I really like about this palette is that I feel like I can create a couple of different looks. I might have to dip into other palettes if I want different matte shades, but I'm kind of okay with that. But I wouldn't recommend using all of these shades on the eyes like I did today. Really just did that to sort of show you guys what these colors look like, how do they apply, what are my recommendations for application to really get the full color payoff and really to get the glitter to stick. But in general, like I don't, <laughs> I don't necessarily think that this color Forever Charmed goes in this palette. I think it would look really pretty to pair that with the plum shade, what is that called? Forbidden Amour. I think those two would look really good together. The other day I wore Forever Charmed and I put that all over the eye and then I just put my bronzer in the crease and then I topped it with Diamonds Desire. And I'll try and put up a clip here of my Sephora haul video when I was wearing that. You guys loved that look. Several of you on Instagram commented, what are you wearing on your eyes when I was filming stories before? I got a lot of compliments 
when I wore this palette. It seems like you guys really like the looks that I created. Another day, I also just created a really beautiful soft look with these two metallic shades. And then I kind of just popped the pink shade in the crease. And then again, I topped it off with Diamonds Desire. You really can create a lot of really nice looks with this, but I do think that this Forever Charm shade, it can just be a little bit challenging to use with the rest of the colors in this palette for sure. I honestly just wish he had included a different like matte shade in the palette because this shade and this shade are what she calls her structure builders. Those are the ones that you use in the crease or the outer corner, etc., to sort of add depth. Like they're the matte shades and they're very similar to volume one. And it's really hard to create a look with this palette and not have it look fairly pink and purple. And I just don't really enjoy using, especially this chartreuse color with a bright pink crease. It's like, I don't wanna have a bright pink crease every time I create a look. So I just wanna mention that. I think that is my major qualm with this is that I kinda wish that she had maybe changed these up a little bit, given us something a little bit different. I definitely appreciate that you can use this shade as a blush. I think that that looks really pretty, but I kinda wish that at least one of these matte shades, the structure builders, were a little bit different. All of that being said, when I do look at these palettes, you know, first off, they are very similar. They're not exact, but they're pretty similar, which probably wouldn't annoy me if these palettes were released maybe a year apart or even six months apart, but these palettes were released like two to three months apart. <laughs> I just wish they were a little bit different. I think that if you are somebody that really likes pink and purpley looks, go with volume one or stick with volume one if you already got it. I really don't think that you need both of those. I think that with volume one, everybody kind of got more or less the same look. Like everybody created a very pink, slightly purple look with a pop of blue. Like that's, that's kind of the look that you create with this palette and that's fine. I thought it was a stunning look, but I really would only go for this palette if you're really into that pink in the crease and then a pop of blue. With the volume two, you definitely get a little bit more differentiation of color, especially if you don't want something that is gonna be as pink and purple. I definitely feel like I can create more looks with the volume two. That being said, I do think I have to dip into other palettes to kind of bring mattes that pair a little bit better with this aqua blue and with this chartreuse. But I'm kind of okay with that because I have so many eyeshadow palettes, like I'm fine with that. I honestly really like this palette for these three colors right here. I think they're really unique. And then these typical like light pink shimmery champagne metallics that she includes, I always love those. I love those for really nice, soft day looks. And I think it looks really pretty with Diamonds Desire over top. So all of that being said, I would actually say between the two palettes, I actually prefer volume two the most. I think that it's a little bit more unique. I can get more looks from it. I really enjoy the pops of color and I really like Diamonds Desire. Even though it has a ton of fallout and it's a little bit harder to work with, I think if you do use like a mixing liquid or a mixing medium, it definitely helps that glitter adhere to the eye. And I, I saw significantly less fallout from doing so. So yeah, guys, I like this one better, but I don't think I would recommend this one necessarily if you are a Pat McGrath beginner, because I just don't think that this color scheme is super comprehensive. I think that beginners might struggle to use these shades just a little bit, but it all depends on personal preference and how you like to pair colors together. For me, when I pair a lot of these colors together, they get a little bit muddy. And so I basically just decide, you know, am I gonna have more of a blue look? Do I want a chartreuse look? Or do I want something that's gonna be very pink and purple? Cause that's really gonna dictate the shades that I go into. Lastly, let's talk about these satin allure lipsticks. Talking about the formula first. This is a lovely formula. I really like it. It feels so weightless and comfortable on the lips. I did get two nude shades and I feel like with the nude, this is so easy to just put on. In fact, I reapplied this right before filming this because I stopped to eat breakfast and I didn't even look in the mirror. I just like, slap this right on. This is the color negligee. The formula is very lovely. That being said, I don't think it's necessarily anything groundbreaking. I think it's very much in line with other luxury brands. So if you already have a lot of other satin lipsticks or you have a lot of other satin nude lipsticks, etc., 
I don't think you necessarily need this. The colors are very beautiful, very wearable. They fit in with the theme of the collection, but they're not unique. Like these are not unique colors. Like the ones that I got are very much very similar to other ones that I have in my collection. I'm not mad that I bought them, but I just want to put that out there because I just really don't think that you need these if you have other luxury nude satin lipsticks in your collection. Now let's talk about the packaging. I low-key hate the packaging. <laughs> It's kind of the thing that I'm the most pissed off about. I know that I mentioned that the two eyeshadow palettes, they're very similar, but that doesn't even like bother me that much. What bothers me the most is that I'm shopping from a luxury brand and I'm getting cheap drugstore packaging. And I know that these are $28 and listen, maybe what she was trying to do, you know, this is a partnership, right? So Pat McGrath, she also has to work together with Netflix. It's a collaboration. Both parties have to really agree on the products, the color scheme, the price points, et cetera. So I'm definitely not like blaming Pat McGrath here, but I do think that this packaging, it just doesn't really stand up to the Pat McGrath quality that most of us know and love. I almost, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I almost rather just spend more money to get something that's really, really nice. Like this just feels like a little bit of cheapness, a little bit of cost cutting in my opinion. I do appreciate though that these are $10 cheaper. So for that, I think these are a tremendous value. It's just personally, if you are somebody that really likes Pat McGrath, it's like, you don't really need these. I'm kind of curious to see if she re-releases these in more of a long-term packaging and if the price increases for that. I feel like that's going to upset some people, but I don't know guys, we'll see. All in all, I do really like this formula, but I'm not a really big fan of the packaging. And so for that reason, I can't really recommend them. Only get this if you are a Bridgerton fan, you wanna try something new, maybe you'd like to collect these items. That's who I think that these are for. So those are all my thoughts in the collection. Definitely comment down below and let me know what you think. I know a lot of you guys picked up some items from this collection and then some of you guys had similar thoughts to me. You thought it looked too similar to what we saw with the volume one, but definitely let me know. Comment down below. Let's sound off and help out each other. I would also love to know if any of you guys picked up like the powder puff body shimmer, if you picked up the blush palette. I really just want to start a discussion. Once again, I love Pat McGrath. I thought all of these products were extremely good quality. It's just like there's some pros and cons between them. Once again, guys, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. It definitely helps me out. And if you are still watching this video, maybe it means that you like this video and you should subscribe to my channel. So hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell to hear about every time I post a new video. I hope that you guys are having a fantastic day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.